Welcome back to Alec TV, coming to you from the third day of the States and Nation Policy Summit here in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm joined now by a very special guest, Lauren Chen from FreedomWorks. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Ah, thank you so much for coming on. I really yeah, appreciate sure. it. So uh, you're about to speak to the Alec General Assembly here in just a few moments, um, and you're going to be talking about millennial voter outreach, is that correct? Yes, which I know for some people might think, okay, you know, this is, we're talking about free markets and things, millennial voter outreach, do we even bother? I think we should. I think we should you know, at least try to reach these voters. I absolutely agree. And I, I have a, you know, very personal story about this with my, so two of my brothers, myself and my third brother, very politically active. He's with, he's in New Jersey. I'm here in DC. Um, my youngest brother just started in Michigan, met our assembly woman from New Jersey. She's like, oh, you're 18. You should register to vote. And he comes back to me and goes, why would I register to vote? Yeah. Why, why are, why are millennials saying that sort of thing? Well, I think there's a very widespread feeling of apathy and almost nihilism in a lot of millennial voters. Uh, millennial voter turnout for 2016 was, I think, around mid-40s, which is kind of where it hovers at. So it's, it's pretty low. Most millennials do not vote who are able to. And I, I think it kind of stems from feeling like their vote has no power. Their vote is not going to affect anything, which is so frustrating because that's exactly how changes are met. And it's interesting because when I look at so many of the millennial activists on Twitter, I feel like as a generation, we're almost more like to protest than we are to vote, which doesn't really make sense, but I think right. that's where a lot of people's minds go. I don't like something, let me just complain about it instead of let me actually you know, take part in the legislative system and make real change. And that's why I really try to stress to people when I talk to them that local elections, especially I think in a lot of ways, make more of a difference than the, the, the national ones. But so many millennials don't understand that. And I have to imagine that, given that the national average for, for millennial voters is so low, that Millennials voting in local elections has to be even lower. Oh, for sure. For Unbelievable. Sure. If I went to someone and asked them who their, who their state representative Probably was. Probably wouldn't know. Absolutely. Yeah. So how do you fix that? I mean, it, it is hard, and that's kind of what FreedomWorks and I are trying to do. We're trying to think of new ways to get millennials. I think first we need to get them interested in politics and the issues affecting their lives before we can ask them to vote, right? Because ideally, right. we don't just want people voting. We want people being informed on the issues and voting based on their knowledge and who kind of conforms to best what they want. We don't want to just pack people in a bus and hope they keep voting for whoever we tell them. That's not a that's sustainable. Not do, no. no, it's not a sustainable strategy either. So I, I think the way that we address this. Is right now millennials care about a few issues college especially things like health care um, you know I, I am not for the idea of free college because for nothing is free but right. these people who are saddled with these student loans they're, they're not wrong for being concerned about that so I think for the longest time on the right we haven't really addressed the issue uh, I was reading a study the other day that for every inc one dollar increase in federal student loans, the average cost of tuition has increased 65 cents. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's a shocking statistic. So again, these students, you know, these young people aren't, they're not wrong for being concerned about this, but I think as people who care about free markets, individual responsibility, uh, limited government, we need to be better at telling them how we can make their lives better. Hey, are you upset at the high cost of college tuition? Let's try to let the free market work its magic a little bit more. Let's get government out of the business of subsidizing these endow these universities that have billions of dollars of endowments, right? You're upset about, you're going to be kicked off your parents' health care plan soon. Right. That's another one that I think a lot of millennial voters are thinking, oh, crap, I'm 25, Absolutely. what's going to happen? I had that same problem. Right, and there's a lot of people who actually think that the healthcare system in place now is something Republicans wanted, which is so crazy because that's not at all. But I don't think we, we do enough of a job telling people how we're going to lower costs for them and increase the affordability and accessibility of care, right? Because you have people like Bernie Sanders who's saying, I'm going to give it to you free. We need to be able right. to address or combat that in some way. So how do you communicate this message yeah. to a millennial audience? Like what, what's, the, what's the advice there? It's, it's very hard, right? Because you, you kind of, in a way, have to be the parent who says, you actually can't eat candy for breakfast all the time. That's not a good idea. But it's, you know, it is hard when someone is offering these voters this hypothetical utopia to say, hang on, we live in reality. Um, maybe what we can offer you isn't as good as free, but what they're offering you isn't really free either. So I think um, education has to play a large part in this. And there have been studies done. The more college students are actually educated about things like the free markets, the more likely they are to reject socialism. I think it's like 80% of philosophy students embrace socialism. They see it in a positive light. If we, if we look at um, finance and accounting majors, that's down to about 20%, right. right? So it kind of speaks for itself. So, I mean, we have people like AOC, people like Bernie Sanders who 
do these amazing so social media campaigns saying, we're going to give this to you free. Look at this homeless person. I was just looking at Lana Moore now has a housing for all plan. We're going to give them a house. We need to be out there with a message saying, this is why that won't work. Instead, this is what we're going to do, and this is how it will improve people's lives. It sounds like such a simple thing, but in the social media realm, where millennials kind of hang out, right. that's lacking from the right. Absolutely. So communicating in that, that social media um, medium, to speak, right. so to speak, is something that it seems like the, the right is really kind of lag behind. Yes. So how, how do we kind of change that narrative? Well, I think um, part of it is coming here and talking to the, the leaders and movers of the conservative movement and saying, hey guys, you have an amazing message. Get over to where the young people are and start talking to them, right? Um, President Trump, you know, for all of the controversy that his tweets get, at least he's talking directly to voters, right? And he's not the only... Uh, I guess conservative politician who's kind of beginning to embrace that. We have Dan Crenshaw who right. gets an amazing engagement on social media. He's really smart with how he uses it. You know, he's been on also places like Joe Rogan. If you are a conservative politician or leader, don't be afraid to engage with new and independent media, right? Because right. the average age of someone watching Fox News or even CNN, they're in their 60s. Be where the young people are if you want to talk to them. Someone who's also great is Thomas Massey, right? You can yeah, he is. And I think maybe it's a little bit uncomfortable for politicians to look at something like Twitter and think this is how you get to voters. But I mean, that's what a lot of people do and it works for them. I mean, it really is about putting themselves out there. Exactly, exactly. Right. And that's that's great advice for state legislators as well, like we do at Alec. Exactly, everybody. And that's the thing, if you're a state legislator, I think especially, you're able to tweet about issues or communicate about issues that really matter to your constituents, right? You can be very, very specific. And you know, if there are any, uh, I guess, local representatives watching this, don't be afraid to engage in the hashtags trending in your area because it actually varies by geographical location. So you want people to know that, hey, you're here, you're representing them, or you're trying to if you're running, and you're engaged with the issues that matter to them most. Social media is a great way to do that. Awesome. Hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I really am looking forward to hearing what you have to say up there in, in a couple minutes. So it's going to be really fun. Thanks. I hope everyone likes it. I'm really excited, too. Awesome. Keep it right here. We're going to have more Alec TV coming up in just a little bit.